All right, we're now live. So uh, welcome to Love and Passion. <laughs> um, and Melissa Borg, you can take it away. All right, I'll be your moderator today. Um, welcome everyone and thanks to Love Sweet Arrow for hosting this chat today. Um, we're gonna be getting started in a few minutes. So I'd like to remind everyone that uh, we'll be giving away a basket full of dog goodies as well as an animal communication session with animal communicator and author on this panel, Babette De Young. We will be announcing those randomly at uh, the end of the event. So hopefully you'll stay with us as we uh, meet with all these lovely people. We're excited to have four great romance authors who all have lovable themes of dogs within their books. We're gonna introduce them and I'll introduce them and then they'll introduce themselves. So welcome Babette. If you can introduce yourself, where you're from and what you write and who's your favorite author right now. Ooh, okay. Uh, you got you a few questions. All right, that's good. I hope I can remember them all. Um, so I live in the, the uh, Gulf Coast area and um, I write romance with an animal centric twist. My, um, my characters um, are all kind of in some form of learning animal communication at some point in the, on that journey. So um, that's all that. I don't know who my favorite authors are. I have so many. Um, I just finished Mara's book, uh, the, I, I just finished Cold Nose, Warm Heart and um, starting on A Tale for Two. And, um, and I also picked up, um, well, let me just show you. I have all these that I'm- <laughs> <laughs> A little light reading. A little light reading. Well, and, and I'm, working, I'm working on making time for light reading. But uh, so, yeah, meanwhile, that's I mean, that's pretty much all I've got. Well, thank you very much. Um, so welcome, Lucy Gilmore. Lucy, if you could introduce yourself, where you're from, what you write and well, who's your favorite author right now? Um, I live in Spokane, Washington, which is the not Seattle side of Washington, just touching the Idaho border. Um, and I write rom-coms with uh, animal animal flair. Um, and as for my favorite author right now, I'm on a KJ Charles kick. Um, I tend to do authors in lumps. So I'll read somebody's backlist for months and months and then I'll move on. But right now that's, that's where I am. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, welcome Mara Wells. Mara, if you could introduce yourself, where you're from, what you write and who your favorite author is right now. Hi. I'm Mara Wells and I live in Hollywood, Florida. I'm originally from California, but uh, ended up in Florida, which is a weird thing for a Californian to do. I still think of myself as a Californian though, even though I've been here 21 years. So uh, let's see, I write uh, romance with uh, dog themes. I'm the author of the Fur Haven Dog Park series. And the series takes place in Miami Beach where I lived for 14 years. So. The series is also an homage to my great love of art deco, everything. Um, and my favorite writers are here today. Um, <laughs> Debbie and Lucy and Babette are some of my favorite authors. And I just finished Joanna Shoup's new um, book and it was amazing, like everything she writes, so. All right, excellent, thank you. All right, and last but definitely not least, Debbie Burns, could you introduce yourself and where you're from, what you write, and who's your favorite author right now? Sure. I'm Debbie Burns. Um, I'm in St. Louis, and I write, um, mostly I've written um, the Rescue Me series so far. I have five books out in that, all set around an animal shelter based in St. Louis, and I try to hi highlight different St. Louis neighborhoods and different books and different restaurants, but the, the bigger theme of the books is... Um, the animal shelter and the different dog stories and obviously the love interest. 
And then recently, um, my newest release is a um, wimp, uh, independent standalone women's fiction with a, a dog rescue in it, but not set in a shelter. It's actually set in um, Galena, Illinois. Oh, and favorite authors. Uh, <laughs> well, I love, I love um, your work. I've definitely read that, Lucy and Mara. And I, Babette, I just ordered yours, so oh, I can read it. Um, I would say I'm reading a lot of, I do backlist as well. Kristen Higgins is probably one of my all-time favorite. Probably everybody's all-time favorite. But um, I just started uh, Kristen Hanna's The Four Winds. Excellent. All right, so now I've got a couple questions for you guys and we're gonna go kind of round robin like we did with the introductions. So Babette, tell us a short summary about your recent release and specifically the role dogs play in it. Okay, so um, this book, uh, Warm Nights in Magnolia Bay is uh, set in Louisiana Gulf Coast area. And um, it's, uh, it's about a woman who comes to live with her aunt for the summer and her aunt is an animal communicator. And the hero moves in next door and he wants to flip and renovate and flip the property. But then um, he finds out that the place next door is basically a petting zoo, a very loud petting zoo. And uh, so that puts them in opposition to each other, but the animals on the farm have um, other ideas and they start meddling and throwing these two together. So it's fun. That definitely sounds like it. Um, Mara? What about your story of your recent release and how dogs play a role in it? I just happen to have it right here. So, and look, I've learned in Zoom to hold it like this and not like this. Um, right, right. <laughs> good job, good job. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, I it. As I go. So Pause for Love is the, ah, oh, they're, they're twinsies, uh, is the third book in the For Haven Dog Park series. So it's the third Donovan brother. Uh, he's been away in the Marines for 14 years and he's come back to help his brothers with the renovation that started in book one. And uh, his high school girlfriend, Danielle, is still living on the beach. Uh, they haven't seen each other since he broke up with her in a really horrible way to, to go off to the Marines. And she runs an animal rescue for greyhounds. So here in Florida, about two years ago, uh, they banned, they, we voted to ban greyhound racing from the state and it just so happens that the book came out like a month after the ban took place. So as soon as the vote happened, I started thinking about this book, like what are it's gonna happen to all those greyhounds? And there was a lot of, um, there were a lot of articles about how most of them would probably end up being put down. But then a whole lot of people stepped up to run rescue organizations and find homes for them. And they were um, busing them across the country to find homes and, and all kinds of stuff. So I. I put Danielle in the thick of, of rescuing all of these retired racers. And so Knox comes back, she's still in love with Danielle, it turns out, but she doesn't trust him. But one of her fosters falls in love with Knox. And so she decides she's gonna match make. Knox is like, I don't want a dog, I don't want a dog. She's gonna match make Knox with this dog and um, the dog has other ideas for them. So their story unfolds from there. And like Debbie was saying about uh, St. Louis, I tried to also highlight different areas of you know, not well-known places in the Miami area because people always think of like glitz and glamour with Miami Beach, but there's a there's a petting zoo, there's baby goats. It's a, it's a whole romp. Oh, sounds like fun. All right. So Lucy, tell us a short summary about your recent release and how dogs play a role in it, please. I do not have one because it doesn't come out to the end of June. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, thank you for our, our, our pro Vanna White thing. Yes. Um, <laughs> but it's called Rough and Tumble, um, and it's about a the star quarterback for a fake Seattle football team that I've called the Lumberjacks, um, who he really wants to retire from football, but he comes from a football family and they aren't too keen on it. Um, and they're almost in the Super Bowl, which is called the Kickoff Cup. Um, and he's afraid that if he leaves the team, then um, he'll he'll like it'll be a, a curse striking that they've they've had uh, influencing them for years and years and years. And so he needs good luck. And so he finds out that the woman who runs the Puppy Bowl um, has never lost. Her team has never lost um, 
a single game with the puppies. And so he kind of recruits her against her will to help him get good luck and break the curse and find a way to lead football. Um, and there are obviously dogs everywhere because <laughs> it's a puppy bowl book. But um, so the heroine is a, she's a foster parent for dogs. So she t takes them in routinely. And um, the book starts, she's got a pregnant golden retriever. So it gives birth and has lots of puppies. And then she makes the hero adopt puppies and then his whole team adopts puppies. So they're, they're everywhere in the book. Very nice. All right, so Debbie, tell us a short summary about your recent release and specifically how dogs play a role in it. Okay, uh, my most recent release is the women's fiction, so it's not part of the shelter books. Um, it takes place in Galena, Illinois. So another, I want to do to another real location that I just love that little town. It's, uh, if you've ever been there, it's just a really quaint historic town set on a on the Galena River in the hillsides up there in Northern Illinois. Um, but it's set in a tea house, a, a tea garden. And um, there's a lot, a lot of backstory there on why the heroine um, has made it from California to Galena, why she's kind of hiding out there with her daughter. And as the story goes, that unfolds. And at the start of the story, a journalist um, arrives at the tea garden um, inquiring about a story about his um, late grandfather, that the actual owner of the tea garden, he's there for her. She's an 80 year old woman, but it um, he gets interested in the backstory of, of the Josie, the heroine, and the story unfolds from there. And there, it's not set in the shelter, but there is a dog that is rescued, um, a Bernese mountain dog and uh, named Buttercup and he's, uh, yeah, so it was fun. And then uh, there's a cat in the, eventually a Maine Coon. I love, I have a Maine Coon and they're just very personable cats. So I did put a cat in there at some point as well. All right, um, so new questions. So Mara, does anyone, well, I guess this is for the panel but I'll start with you Mara just as a question. Um, do you write from a dog's point of view? No, none of my scenes are from a dog's point of view. So what about yourself, Lucy? No, I've never done it. And, you know, I've never even considered it. It seems like really? it would be too much of a challenge for me. <laughs> I feel like that bet might be able to know what's going on inside a dog's head, but I, I don't. How about yourself, Debbie? Um, I have an about, well, I've completed the sixth book in the Rescue Me series mm -hmm. now. So I would say that um, exactly half of them, I've put a dog's point of view and it was a kind of a gamble at first. I wasn't sure what my editor would say. Mm -hmm. I just felt like, especially I started with the third story, there was a stray and I didn't know how else to tell his story. And I just, um, I decided after I'd started writing it that I just needed to try to tell it from his point of view. And I honestly kind of went by this, um, this quote, um, I've never seen a wild thing feel sorry for itself. Um, if you remember that one and uh, just, really tried to keep that part of the story. It was much, just very different writing, um, not a subjective, just very present, keeping it in the is, you know, this is where, this is where we are right now. And it was quite a different experience. And uh, so I wouldn't say it's a third of the book, but when I do it, it's select, you know, select scenes are a little bit shorter and they um, peppered throughout the book. And I've done that now, I think three times. Interesting. How about you, Babette? Do you write uh, from the dog's point of view? And if so, uh, how is your process? Yes, I do. Uh, so the in Warm Nights in Magnolia Bay, oh, and I'm going to do this, look, <laughs> like Morris. Um, there, is a, there is a dog who's, it, it's a wolf dog who actually his character arc mirrors the hero's character arc in the book. They've both been um, betrayed, they've both been abandoned basically, and they um, are both having trouble trusting. So as the characters, as the hero's arc proceeds throughout the book and he heals and, and learns to become more whole, so does the wolf dog who has kind of bonded to him. The wolf dog was abandoned, um, just thrown off the back of a truck and is coming around looking for food and um, it takes him a while to trust. So I had, just because of my animal communication background, those scenes were easy and fun for me to write uh, because I just, I have, 
I've spoken with, chatted with so many dogs who've gone through so much and, um, and yet they're so, they're, they're afraid to trust, but they're so forgiving. And so, you know, that was, that was really fun. And like Debbie was saying, it's, it is a different vibe. It's a very different feel to write from an animal's point of view because they are very present. They're very in the moment. They, they, they're not worried about, um, the past or the, or the future, unless it's the immediate future and they're about to be eaten. <laughs> they don't, they don't really worry about that. They're very present. So, um, yeah. And, and in the next book, I'm writing it actually from a horse, a horse's point of view and a cat's point of view. Oh, very interesting. Um, so Lucy, have you ever, have pets ever gotten your way of writing? <laughs> My dogs are pretty chill, so they are not a problem, but my cats, I have two cats, and <laughs> anybody who sits at a computer is fair game. They're pawing for attention. The little one will just climb up everywhere, and he likes to be cradled like a baby, like in the crook of one arm. Um, and so I will actually sometimes put a sling on because he likes the tight feeling like a, like a baby sling and so that he can be warm and cuddled, and also I can have my hands free tight. <laughs> I was going to say, and work gets done then? Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> Debbie, how about yourself? Have your pets gotten in the way of your writing? Yeah, I would say when haven't they gotten in the way? <laughs> I have uh, the same, actually, probably as Lucy, two dogs and two cats right now. And um, mostly it's the cats. But if my younger dog, if it's been too long that I've been at the computer, she will just like put her, her little arms on the, the chair and stare at me until I, <laughs> until I give her some attention. Understandable. Babette, how about yourself? Um, well, yes, I mean, let's show of hands, how many people have been typing and the screen went dark because your cat unplugged something behind the computer. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that happens. And then the dogs let me know. Um, cause we actually, I, I, I don't even know if I should reveal the, um, depth of my insanity, but we have five dogs and, <laughs> and, <laughs> But, you know, to be fair, we also live on eight acres, so it's not as bad as it sounds. Um, but, yeah, the dogs are like, oh, hey, it's 3.30 and it's time for us to eat and go for a walk and you're you're behind. So, uh, but it's their job, right? You know, it's their job to keep us from getting too serious or too immersed. Yep. Mara, how about yourself? Have the pets gotten into the way of your writing? I wouldn't say they got in my way. I'd say they're definitely part of the process. So the the Chihuahua, it was like, oh, you you're busy. I'll leave you alone. But the Poodle is, he has like a timer in his head, and if I'm at the computer too long, he comes around. And depending on where I'm sitting, if he can lever himself under my, you know, if I'm typing, he tries to get his, you know, and he'll like flip my hands like this until, and if I, you know, if I'm doing something sneaky like working at my desk, then he'll just, you know bang on, you know, he's got this like very delicate, he's like, boom, 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 until I pay attention. And I have to say that sometimes I'm like, oh, right, I'm just, he's always right. It is, I do need to like get up and walk around and <laughs> get some water and come back. So I've just, I've accepted that that's part of the process. When Houdini says it's time to take a break, it's time to take a break. Understandable. So um, are there any author, any other offers, authors I can speak that you read that you really like how they incorporate dogs or animals into their stories. And we'll start with you, Debbie. Um, I would say one of the ones that I just remember from quite a while ago, just being really moved by was, I, I think you pronounce it, uh, Gruen, Sarah Gruen, Water for Elephants and um, all of her. I love how she writes animals in her stories. Sometimes it's heavy and makes you cry, but I, she does a phenomenal job. With it. What about you, Mara? Any authors that you like how they incorporate animals into their stories? Yes, I like I like all animal stories. I grew up um, reading James Harriet. That's one of my mom's favorite authors. So I just like anything with animal animal in it. And one of the first books I ever saw that that was a romance that also featured animals was Katie Ruggles' books. So I'm a big fan of hers yeah. as well. Yeah. Lucy, how about yourself? What um, do you like? I think 
Debbie was the one who already mentioned Kristen Higgins. Um, I feel like her early books were always the dog on the cover and the, the dog is the main, the main character. Um, and I think she's probably why I fell in love with animals in romance novels to begin with. Even though she broke the cardinal sin that one time that we won't talk about. <laughs> that no one speaks of again. <laughs> Babette, how about yourself? So I'm, I'm going to jump on the Kristen Higgins train. I, you know, <laughs> I, well, that, and it, it was also the first romance novel I read that had animals and, you know, that where the dogs weren't just like window dressing, but they were actually a character that had some impact on, on the, the um, human characters. And so I, I, you know, I really loved that because up until then it had always seemed odd to me i've been reading romance all my life and it seemed odd to me that so many of them nobody has an animal you know no no one has an animal companion nobody has a dog and i'm that's such a big part of my life you know my animals um but one of the most touching animal books that i read was the art of racing in the rain by garth stein that book just blew me away that was so fantastic so yeah, I can only aspire. <laughs> that was phenomenal. All right, so Babette, you, you did say that you had a small horde of dogs. What type of dogs do you have? Oh my goodness, okay. So um, my dog that, that has Xanax every day to keep him from being absolutely crazy is his name is Truman. He is a Catahoula and he's, um, he's a, a rescue dog that I took in as a foster. And it became obvious very quickly that he would never be able to live or survive anywhere other than here. He's wow. deaf, can't see well. He has brain damage from being abused. And he's also just kind of messed up in the head <laughs> from um, everything that he went through. So, um, and then my daughter has dogs, which they're hers. So I'm not gonna count them because we can't be here all night talking about just my dogs. But um, Georgia is, she's actually sitting at the ottoman by my feet and she is camera shy. So I won't put her up here for you to see, but she's the um, inspiration for the character of Georgia in, in the Magnolia Bay series. She's in the first book and she will be in all the books because she's pretty much in charge. Okay. So what about yourself, Mara? What type of dogs do you have? I have a, a poodle mix named Houdini Beauregard and a chihuahua mix, Shiva Riva Rita Peanut. And they're both rescues, Houdini on purpose, Shiva as a foster that then we couldn't get, couldn't give her up. So we, we ended up adopting her. They're both kind of sacked out on the guest bed, right? I don't know if you can see them over there. Yeah. Very chill. <laughs> So <laughs> they are, they're very chill. They've become quite accustomed to the Zoom life. So um, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I got like distracted by moving my computer. <laughs> so the two, oh, I know what I was gonna say. So Houdini is the inspiration for Lulu in book one, um, Cold Nose, Warm Heart, except uh, that the licking that Lulu does comes from Sheba. So I sort of blended a couple of characteristics. And then um, in the series, uh, there's a good friend named Sydney and she has a little chihuahua. So I did sneak my own dogs into the books for sure. Use, you know, use what you know. Lucy, how about yourself? What kind of dogs do you have? So I have two Akita mixes um, who are not related to each other. They're from two separate half Akita um, litters. And it's funny because they're they're both fairly young. And I got the first one when I was writing my first puppy book. So Puppy Love, I was researching and learning about all these puppies and then I really wanted one. Um, and we had just an old lady dog at that point. So we got one. Uh, and, then this, and then the time, by the time the second book I started writing, the older dog had passed away. And so I was writing another puppy book and researching more puppies. And I was like, no, I have to get another one. So I kind of set a precedent where I like got a new puppy every time I started a new puppy book. Uh, but hopefully I have stopped. I broke, I broke that um, pattern. Otherwise we would be that, that would That had to be hard, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. They're big dogs. So there's a limit yes. to how many. Yes, they are. are. So, all right, Debbie, what kind of dog do you have? I have two. Um, they're both rescues. One is just turned 11 and the other one um, is about to be five. The 11-year-old, I'm not going to 
mess with her because she's terrified of storms and there's lightning mm -hmm. out there, but she's a border collie, um, border collie mix. We, we did not DNA test her because she was border collie enough that we just didn't feel we needed to. And then the second dog is, um, she's a foster fail as well. <laughs> and um, she is, we ended up DNA testing her. We call her the Nala monster and she's probably hiding under my bed because of the storm <laughs> as well. But she is a, um, the DNA re results came back. She's Basset Hound, um, Pitbull, Rottweiler, and Napoleon Mastiff. And she's, she's like little parts of all of them. You can see them <laughs> when you look at her. She's pretty, pretty unusual. And then I have, well, the only cat that I claim is this one that's laying next to me. And he's the one that I put in a book. He's, <laughs> he's, uh, he was my inspiration for the Maine Coon that was in um, the second book I wrote, Sit Stay Love. And uh, just really thinks he's a dog. He uh, goes in and out. He was born in a, a barn and um, we uh, took him in. Just a really unusual cat. <laughs> so. Sounds like it. All right, so here's another one for you since uh, I've heard about what you guys have. What's your dream dog breed that you haven't owned yet? Babette? Oh, I got that one. Um, <laughs> Wait, no, that I haven't owned yet ever, or like I really I love Australian Shepherds. I don't have one. I would like to have one again. I've had them in the past. They're mm -hmm. such they're just such wonderful dogs. They're so smart. They're so sweet. Um, yeah, I love Aussies. Oh, okay. So one I've never had. I saw an um, an Aussie Doodle. So like Aussie Poodle mix. Mm -hmm. And they're really cute. I guess if I had to go with something I've never had before, that would be, that would be it. Debbie, how about yourself? What's the dream dog you haven't owned yet? It would, there's just so many. Um, <laughs> it's hard to choose, so, I know. I think I'll, um, I would love to have um, like a Bernese mountain dog or a Great Pyrenees or something at some point. I haven't yet, so. Lucy, how about yourself? I was at the grocery store the other day and they had, you know, a little advertisement up on the bulletin board for um, uh, St. Bernard Border Collie mix of, of puppies. And I did not know that that was what I wanted until I read it. And I said, yes, <laughs> like, really long. I did not get one again, restraint, but I think that- Good, I good job, pictures. that had to have been hard. Yeah, they were really cute in the pictures. Mara, how about yourself? This is a really tough one because my mom was a dog breeder. So oh. growing up, um, we always had the breed that she was currently breeding. And then we always had other dogs that she was trying out to see if she wanted to switch breeds. So I've had Bernese Mountain Dogs, Australian Shepherds, <laughs> Italian Greyhounds. Um, so the list gosh. is very yeah, limited. Like what you have a list. Yeah. yeah, the King Charles Spaniels, the Pugs, the Rottweilers, Dobies, Minpin, like, Oh yeah, we had, yeah, yeah, we've had growing up. Um, but I think it, based on the research I did for Pause for Love, I'd like to, I've had Italian greyhounds, which are the miniatures and they were just such delightful, delightful dogs, but I'd love to have a big greyhound and I, I have a big yard now and I was like, can imagine it like running around the pool. Yeah, they're so beautiful. They are very such, beautiful. And they're such uh, big love bugs. They just wanna, I've never seen a greyhound standing up that it's not leaning on somebody they're just they're... <laughs> yeah, they, so I, I have a friend of mine that rescues them and they are just the sweetest things hmm. so what right. one you know where to go now yeah <laughs> right <laughs> so back on to uh your books so how do you celebrate when you finish your book debbie why don't you start this one um, usually we go out to dinner. I take my kids out to dinner. Usually that's, um, that's our go-to. And then after that, <laughs> I start cleaning my house or working in my garden, something that I've probably ignored for too long while I'm closing in on deadline. <laughs> How about you, Lucy? What do you do when you, to celebrate? I don't really. Um, I probably should. I think most of the time I just open a new document and start the next book. <laughs> Mara, how about yourself? Like, how do you know when the book is done? Well, I how mean, you know when, when you consider it done. 
because there's first draft done and there's edits right. done. And and there's, then, oh like, my gosh, it's, it's live done. Copy edits come back and then, yeah. yeah. So, so my experience is they're boomerangs. Like as soon as you're like, oh, good, this is off my desk and I'm done. And then two weeks later it comes back and you're like, oh no, no I have to do this. So um, I guess I've probably done a, a mix of like going out to dinner or having drinks or, but yeah, mostly I'm just, I'm always thinking, it's like by the time you get to the end of one book, the next book is acting very sexy. And it's like, I'm a one draft book, baby. <laughs> you should dump this loser you're writing and, and come write me. So I'm always like eager to jump into the next one. That's awesome. Bad, bad. how about yourself? How do you celebrate? So unfortunately, I think I can say that I'm a little bit like Lucy and that um, I just, uh, I don't. I, I'm planning to celebrate when I finish the entire series. Maybe we'll go somewhere for a long weekend before the next thing starts knocking on the door. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, but I do, I do allow myself to go work in the garden or um, clean up, <laughs> catch up on the things that I haven't been doing while I was writing. Okay. So what would you say is your interesting writing work, Lucy? So my attention span is very, very small. Um, and so every book that I've ever written has been written in 100 word increments. Um, so I write 100 words and then I usually play a game on my phone, like um, Homescapes or Candy Crush, just a quick turn. And then I do another 100 words and then I play a game. Um, and I cannot seem to write any more than 100 words at a time. So I've given up trying. Hey, learn, learn what your uh, limits are and work within it. That's awesome. So Debbie, how about yourself? What is an interesting writing quirk you have? I have found recently that I write better when I turn off my word count because I get a little too obsessed on the word count sometimes or how not fast the words are flowing or whatever. So turning off that word count. And then the other thing I do is I love, um, I love deep moody uh, cello playlists when I write and just always feel very grounded when I listen to them. Oh, excellent. I, I'm with you on the cello. I didn't even know that you can have a favorite celloist and I've got a couple now because of writing. Me too. <laughs> Where I'm like, oh, I know who you are. Oh, this is weird. <laughs> so Babette, what about you? What do you, do you say is one of your interesting writing quirks? So yeah, I don't know how interesting it is. And I, when I, I think I'm probably a pretty boring writer. Um, one thing I do though, is before I, before I start a new scene, um, I just kind of, I get quiet, I close my eyes and I meditate for a few minutes and just allow the scene to unfold in my mind um, so that I'm basically kind of watching a movie of the scene in my mind before I start writing. And then once I start, of course, you know, the characters take over or something weird happens and then I go with that, but at least I have the scene in my mind before I start. That's interesting. So Mara, how about you? What would you say is an interesting writing quirk you have? I thought back when I wanted to be a writer but hadn't written a book yet, that you would just like sit down and write the book from beginning to end. But it turns out that my books come out in non-sequential scenes. And so you can see behind me, that's actually Pause for Love on the board behind me. Um, so my first draft is just like a whole bunch of scenes that I kind of think like, this one's gonna go in the middle. And, um, and then I have to make cards for like each scene and figure it out. And it usually takes me four or five rounds of shifting. And then I have to go in and uh, and mess with the timeline. And I just thank God for the copywriters because, oh my gosh, am I terrible at noticing that, you know, these two things used to be together, but now they're apart. And so this doesn't make, you know, like this whole, yeah. So I go, um, all of my revisions are about fixing the timeline. Understandable. And everything is happening now. <laughs> We don't, we don't need linear time. <laughs> You're like, what is this? No, no, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Understandable. So Mara, what are you reading right now? Any I'm books? Right now. Um, like, She's like, I have something. I have. <laughs> <this>? <laughs> Your, your, your side table looks like my side table. <laughs> yeah, I, was like, I don't, um, I just finished Joanna Shoup's book and um, then I'm like, and then I have, so also I have a book in like every room 
that I'm working on. So the last book that I read some part of was Moonchild by Gabby Triana. It's a, it's a YA witch, witchy book set in Florida that I'm really enjoying. All right. Lucy, how about yourself? What are you reading right now? Oh, everybody's reaching to the side. <laughs> Uh, Behind the Scenes of the Museum by Kate Atkinson, which is not a romance novel, um, but someone on, I saw some people on Twitter talking about it, so I thought I'd give it a try. Um, I don't think you can see it, but I've dropped it in the bathtub like three times, so it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie, how about yourself? What um, you I just started Kristen Hannah's new book. Um, ah. Yeah, just just started, so. All right, bet bet. So, um, okay, well, so I'm, a, I'm usually reading something nonfiction and something fiction, you know, at the same time, like Mara, I, have, I think it was Mara that said, have something in every room. Um, and also, you know, a book that's been dropped in the bathtub, you know, that's a good book. Um, <laughs> so I'm reading um, Brene Brown, The Gifts of Imperfection, which is really excellent um, for, you know, people who are recovering perfectionists who need to be able to that go and move. Um, and so I just, I just started um, Lucy's book, um, Puppy Kisses. And I just want to point out that it is a felony to kidnap a dog. <laughs> yeah, but that was justified. <laughs> well, you know, however, I, I know this because I have been told by the sheriff in my town when I was um, talking about potentially kidnapping a dog who was not being taken care of because I was seriously about to do it. And they told me I better not. But then they went and, and you know, sussed out the situation. But, you know, but however, talk about narrative drive when, you're, when your heroine on the first page is committing a felony, you can't put that down. <laughs> so, yeah. Very nice. Um, so what are you working on now? Debbie, what's your next book that you're um, working on? I am working on my second women's fiction. I just turned in developmental edits of the sixth Rescue Me book. That'll come out next. And then um, you know how writing works. You have to yes. stop it. You know, So I had been about a third of the way through the second women's fiction book and uh, just picking that back up and deciding if I need to reread what I've written before I jump back in. All right, Lucy, what about you? What are you working on right now? So um, I write cozy mysteries under a pen name, Tamara Berry. Um, so right now I'm working on the first book in a new series um, for that. And there are, there are animals in it, but not, not the way that the, we're, we're doing it with romance. Ah, uh, got it. Babette, how about yourself? What are you working on right now? So I'm doing um, first draft of book three in the Magnolia Bay, the Welcome to Magnolia Bay series, and um, awaiting copy edits for book two. So, yep. Excellent. And Mara, how about yourself? What are you working on right now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, just fingers crossed for me, I have several projects out on submission. So one is a, a new series set in St. Croix in the US Virgin Islands, which is uh, where my mother-in-law lives. Uh, one is set in Miami and uh, features a virtual dating assistant and yeah. Excellent, but, sounds like so exciting. I, right, so right now I'm just kind of cycling through them. Like whatever I'm excited about, I write some and then I'm like, oh, this is never gonna sell and I go to the other one, so. <laughs> Should we should we cross our fingers that you that you only hear back from one, or are you? I, are you I would like I would like to have the problem of multiple offers. Yeah, let's let, let's have it more option if we're gonna cross our fingers. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I like yeah, that, so. Lucy. That is the answer. Right there. <laughs> These are problems I'd like to have. Yes, I'm tired of my problems. I would like new problems. Exactly, <laughs> new ones to try on for a little while. Yes. Yes. Oh, so, too many books to write. I know they're, they're like little kids where they keep jumping up and down and you're like, you look so cute and cuddly. I want to take you home and you can be my irritant. Come on. So, all right. So what was the last book that made you cry? Debbie, do you have one? Um, I know making you think on this one. Well, I'm trying to, um, the last one that made me ball was probably Marley and me. Um, oh. Or Marla, I think that's what the official book name was. I think it is, um, yeah. 
I actually was, um, <laughs> it was a while back, but I was reading aloud to my daughter. We used, I used to read her books all the time. And she's like, mom, are you crying again? <laughs> <laughs> um, but Art of Racing in the Rain was another one that I absolutely loved. Yeah. What about you, Lucy? Uh, probably The Cold Millions by Jess Walter. Again, not a romance, but um, it's set in my hometown and it's uh, about the mining and unions back in the early 1900s and it was really bleak and I think I cried like eight times. Oh. Mar, what about yourself? I don't like this question. Um, <laughs> You're like, can we stop to <laughs> <just> say no? <laughs> I, would, I would say that um, Kerrigan Burns the Victorian Rebel series. I think I cried in every single one of those books. Oh. Okay. Babette, how about yourself? I know you're like, don't make me think about it. <sighs> no, what Debbie said, totally. Um, those those two. And then what was the other one where the, the dog, that, and they made a movie out of it. Dog's the Purpose. Dog. Dog's yeah. Purpose. That yes. Was another, yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that was a hard one too. Yeah. I will say that if I think an animal is going to die, I don't read it. Right? I have I a can't. website. I can't. That <laughs> Does the dog die? Really? <laughs> okay. From, Somebody is really good. Animal. Yeah. What's it called? Like, do, does the dog die? Dot com, I think. Okay. Oh. Yeah. And you can yeah. write in whatever the TV movie or book is, and they'll let you know if it's safe to proceed. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, because this I would a spoiler alert worth having. <laughs> yeah, I, I have turned the television off and thrown the book across the room. If the dog even gets like badly hurt, <laughs> let alone die, that's just that's a bridge too far. Right. All right, so we've got a couple minutes, so we're going to open it up and see if anyone who's joined us has any questions for us for any of the authors. And let me. <laughs> Sorry, I have no like Jeopardy music going on in the background. Um, so I don't see any questions. Oh, wait, maybe something just popped up. Okay. Um, so we, um, I want to also remind everybody that there's the giveaway and that it will be, we'll be posting it, I believe in the chat in just a few, right before we uh, finish up. Um, so on uh, regular life, so after this pandemic starts to slow down, where do you think you guys are going to go on your first vacation away? Lucy? Oh, I, I, I kind of stopped thinking about that and stopped planning it. <laughs> Um, this is, we're coming up on the second spring break for us where we like wanted really badly to go somewhere and then ended up not. Um, we had planned a trip to San Diego uh, last spring break. Um, so I think we'll try to pick up the threads and do that again. Cause the airline miles are just sitting there. Like they didn't give you a refund. So they're like, come fly with us. So I have to. Babette, how about yourself? So I'm thinking a little jaunt up the West coast would be a fun thing. Excellent. What about you, Mara? Anywhere. <laughs> Anywhere, Anywhere that, that isn't house. your own four walls? <laughs> yeah, so we're probably going down to St. Croix to see my mother-in-law as soon as we are all vaccinated. And I have plane tickets to California from last year that I have to use up, right? Um, but I just watched uh, the first season of this show called The Majorca Files which is a very soothing detective show. But the star of the show is really Majorca because they filmed it on the island. So now I'm like obsessed with going there and I do not have enough frequent flyer miles to make it to, <laughs> to Europe, sadly. I, can, I only have enough frequent flyer miles to get to LAX, so. Ah, what about you, Debbie? Where would you go? Um, I was hoping to go to um, Ely, Minnesota last year. So I think we're gonna try to make it up there this summer. That seems very specific. Just, um, I love the, <laughs> the, the lakes up there and um, just a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. Oh, excellent. Okay, because I'm like, all right, I don't know that city. I don't know 
what would be the cause to draw you there? So it's pretty you. close to the Canadian border. You're just up there with, you know, just all the, the lakes and the. Got it. Got it. So what about, I know that we talked about um, current books that you have, but is there a favorite author that if they put out anything, you just have to go and read it? Babette? Uh, so, you know, I am Diana Gabaldon uh, obsessed, so Outlander, um, but I don't think she's really going to be doing any more. Um, I'm, I'm just like biting my nails and waiting for the next season to come out on stars. Uh, but Kristen Higgins, of course, always. Lucy, how about yourself? Any favorite author that you just have to read if they come out? I can't think of any off the top of my head. I know they exist. They're, Amazon right. will remind me when it's time to make that. <laughs> <laughs> Mara, what do you think? Uh, I, both Debbie and Lucy are on my auto buy uh, pre-order list. Amazon reminds me all the time about them. Um, I'm sure about that Amazon will pick up on that soon enough. Uh, just Dorinda Jones, I love her. I'll read anything that she writes. Yep, she's very funny. Very funny author. Very, very funny. Yeah. Debbie, how about yourself? Um, Kristen Higgins. Um, then um, Catherine Center. I really like her. All right. So, so what can are I, you going to think of it? Oh, yeah. Yes, um, so, Debbie, you, you mentioned your next book's coming out, but you didn't tell us the title. Um, the Women's Fiction doesn't have yeah. a title yet. The second oh. women's fiction. And I think the title of the the Six Rescue Me book was just changed. And I cannot tell you what it is. I can tell you what it was, but I can't, I forgot what it is. So. Okay. Just wondering. So that that brings an interesting question up. Titling. Like what was what did you think you were going to name your favorite book? And what did it end up being? I have yes, a funny Mark? story. Yes. Uh, the, the, um, I had submitted Cold Nose, Warm, Cold Nose Warm Heart under another name and our editor didn't like it. And so she suggested Cold Nose Warm Heart and I didn't like that. So I suggested a bunch of other names among them, Puppy Love and Puppy Kisses. And of this big long, big long list of, of, of titles that I sent her, she was like, well, we can't use, you know, these aren't titles we can use. And I was devastated, like, oh my gosh, I don't even know how to write titles. What am I doing writing a book? You know, so fine, Cold Nose Warm Heart, I'll, I'll get used to it. And then I'm at Target one day and I see Puppy Kisses and I was like, oh no, I saw Puppy Love and I was like, what? That is a title. And I saw it was from our publisher. I was like, oh, it was in the pipeline. If it makes, you feel, like, <laughs> if it makes you feel better, that was their title, it was not mine, so. <laughs> But I was like, oh, tell the me it's a title already in use. Not that this is not it. <laughs> I know. I Isn't it, it the funniest me. thing, though? So, Lucy, how about yourself? What did you um, think you were going to name it, and when did it end up being? The My first series with Sourcebooks, um, I, it's called Stealing Mr. Right now. Um, but I had originally called it Married to My Mortal Enemy. And I will forever be sad that that's not a book that I published understand. But that, how about yourself? Well, so when I, the first time I met um, Deb after signing the contract with Sourcebooks and she asked, you know, if I had any input on titles and I said, well, I was just thinking we'd go with book one, book two, book three, book four. Uh, <laughs> so I'm really glad that they are good at, at coming up with titles because I am not. So yeah, I, I did. There was one where I was like, eh, not sure I love it but then I thought about it and I decided no it's it's okay so um yeah I'm just glad somebody has an opinion because I don't <laughs> Debbie how about yourself um I definitely had title dreams for some of them I really wanted one to be called about a dog and I there's I think a pretty big one by I think it's Jenna McClay McKinley mm -hmm. um about a dog and uh but I love that title um and then there are a couple that I had, uh, the women's fiction one had a very different title originally, Summer by the River, that I had um, made perfect sense for the book, but it was too um, mystery driven, hidden pictures is what I had called it. Uh, so that changed. And so I've just learned to embrace what we get. 
yeah, yeah. I've, I've learned that's a hard that, one. that titling is is a separate mm -hmm. skill set from yep. writing the novel itself and yep. I need to stay out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been very happy with covers though. I think Sourcebooks is such good covers. So. What was your favorite piece of your cover? Like what was your favorite cover if you have multiple books and what, why? Oh, I know that one's hard. I saw all, all of you just kind of sit back like, I don't know. Let me think so about I don't, that. I don't know how many of you got, like for each of the books in my um, Forever Home series, they did like a photo shoot with individual dogs. And then they included the like a, a behind the scenes photo of like that dog and gave a little um, intro about his personality. And like in some of them, they had Instagram accounts and like with way more oh followers God. than I do. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, so that's my favorite part is that if you open the front cover, it gives you a little detail about the, the dog that's on that particular cover. Yeah, see? <laughs> oh, that <laughs> is amazing. That's, that's one of the dogs with more Instagram followers than me. Oh, all right. Debbie, what about you? Um, I loved the first cover of A New Leash on Love just because I had it was a lot like I had imagined and I was really happy that it came together like that. And I also just really, really love the cover of Summer by the River, which I didn't bring here to show anyone. <laughs> it's okay. You didn't but, know this question was coming at you. Oh, look at that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that, that was prepared for us all. Yeah. Mara, how about yourself? My favorite cover is Pause for Love because I love the gray hand. And I also like the brightness. I felt like it captured the vibe of the book really well. Very happy with it. Babette, how about yourself? So um, what I what I liked about mine, um, I just it, it captures the the um, the setting very well. It it just looks like what I saw in my mind when I wrote that. But the the dog is not Georgia exactly, mm -hmm. and but she's camera shy, and they didn't ask her to to um, they didn't ask her to pose for this. But it's pretty good. I mean, it's about as good as it can get in terms of representing Georgia without it actually being her. So um, I'm very happy with it. I think they did an excellent job. Yeah, that's a great cover. Yeah, I love the, the color. colors are nice. So Mara, apparently somebody really is liking your hair in the chat. So you're looking good today. <laughs> um, I haven't I haven't had it colored since the pandemic started. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting real up in here. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, I hope you don't change it. No, I, I think I'm going to embrace it. I hadn't seen my original, my original hair color since I was about 13. So I was like, oh, that's what it is. It's kind of exciting. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right, so one last question before we wrap up. So what is a favorite show inspired by a book or a movie of yours? All right, Debbie, I'm gonna, gonna pick on you. Um, I've been watching um, Firefly Lane. That was really good. Um, I was gonna say that. <laughs> You know, you can say ditto. All right, Mara, you have, you have something else? No, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no. <laughs> I was just like, I was trying I was like, happy I to the answer to this door. one. <laughs> no, Firefly Lane just like gutted me. But I couldn't say that's the last book that made me cry because I haven't read the books. So. Ah, uh, okay. What about you, Babette? Oh, I'm a big Outlander fan. You know, that... The, I think that the series was so well done because it so closely followed the books. Yes, it, it did. Lucy, how about yourself? Um, one of the most recent ones that I've watched is probably The Expanse, which is sci-fi. Um, and I haven't actually read the books, but what I really liked about it is that like the, it was on a different channel for a while and then it was going to get canceled. Um, but Amazon picked it up because uh, Jeff Bezos was such a big fan of the books that he like didn't want it to end. And, you know, he has more money than God. So he was like, we're going to, we're going to finish this out. <laughs> it's cool. So excellent. So I think we're gonna has brilliant writing. 
I'm sorry. The, the books. Or the the expa- no, the the TV show. That is oh, really, yes. really good screenwriting on that show. Yeah. It's it's quite amazing what they've done with that show. So I think we're almost at time. So we're gonna start to wrap up. So I want to thank everybody for joining. And um, we'll be giving away a basket for dog goodies, as well as a free session for animal communication with Bebet. And you can find the link in uh, to enter in the chat box for anyone that's joined us. So unless anybody has any last minute questions, thank you panel for being here and joining us for this call. And it's very nice to have some time and thank you everybody that's uh, joined us. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Melissa, for moderating. Thank you, Love Sweet Arrow, for hosting.